Hello my friends and welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be going over a bunch of tools and uh, supplies that I've built up um, over the year. But anyway, I was originally going to make this video about one product, none of which you see sitting here. It's going to be a tip or a hack of uh, filter pads for, the, uh, for my spray booth and I guess for your spray booth depending on what model you have and I think you can take this hack and use it and uh, twist it around a little bit so it works on your booth. Um, let me show you what that hack is. Let me uh, pause the camera. I'm going to spin it towards the booth this way. All right, now we're facing the booth. I was facing this way. The bench is right here. I just spun the camera a little bit to the left. And the hack is, you can see I have no filter pad in here. Um, let me show you the ones that I usually use. Reach it forward here. I usually use these uh, yeah, filter eat. These are from, uh, I get these at Home Depot or uh, Lowe's. I use a 12 by 24. You buy three packs, too, for 12 bucks. One's like five. Fits right in there, perfect. Depends what your uh, booth is, is uh, on your size. This hack will should work because it's customizable. And here's the hack right here. Can you see that? This is a giant 20 by 25. All right, and it's a grid. You can see it, and it's meant to fit into. Uh, it's a custom made, so it comes with the filter pad. Yeah, and uh, and what you do is if. You cut to fit this uh, plastic mesh. I'll show you that in one second. And then I'm going to cut it to fit that size. And I already cut one. I had I bought two of these at 11 bucks, so at 22, you're going to be in. Now this fits in perfectly. See this? This is the same size as this one. That's it. But we're going to make two of them, and we're going to sandwich in between the filter pad. Now it happened to come with the filter material. But I also keep this on hand. This is aquarium filter roll. I get this on Amazon. I will put a link below. There's a blue one and there's a green one. Doesn't matter which. I go with the cheapest because you're going to go through it. You're not really filtering out impurities of water. So it doesn't matter as far as we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich the two of these screens between this and slip it right in. And then all we have to do is buy this cheap roll of stuff, this filter material and just replace it as we need it and um, yeah so that's it so we're gonna cut this up and we're gonna uh, break it down we're gonna show you uh, how it's uh, how it's gonna perform so we'll head back to the bench now and we'll do that in just a couple of minutes we'll head back to the bench get through some of these uh, new tools and uh, supplies and then uh, we'll move on to the booth all right, here we are back at the bench, and um, we'll start off with something that was sent to me from a friend of the channel, and that is these hair covers that go in these mason jars, and um, this works off of one of my favorite hacks my dad taught me in my youth, and that is to keep a brush from becoming bent. You know, when I when I used to leave it in the in the, in the jar, and uh, or a cup with the thinner, whatever thinner it was, and I would leave it while I was kept working. The brushes will always end up coming out bent because they're sitting on themselves, and you end up deforming the brush. My dad always taught me to hang the brush into the water. So I used to use these clothespins, and I used to, you know, if it's water acrylic or if it, even acetone or thinner, just swoosh it in there and then let it dry straight up and down or even into the, into the fluid itself as it eats away at the paint. And uh, when you come out, you have a perfectly straight brush. And this was sent to me from a fan of the channel. Spastic Plastic. All right. His name is Marty. There we are right there. He has a uh, Etsy channel. I was going to say another thing. At YouTube. He has an Etsy channel where he sells these products. I think he primarily face, uh, works on uh, Nerf guns. But he sent me this. And this is right up my alley. Because... It's exactly uh, the process that I use. Now, I took a screen that I had from one of my other jars that I clean with. And we're going to just take any old brush that I have here. And you make sure this fits the largest mason jar that they make. And there it is. You can see the little claws here. You sent me two colors that it's going to hold the brush. And it's got these little uh, notches. 
So no matter how far in or if the, whatever shape the brush is, it'll hold it. Isn't that awesome? So let's go ahead and take some uh, Leo paint here. Not much because we're not going to paint. I don't want to waste too much paint there. What color is this? Gory red. There we go. All right, there we go. So we're going to put some in the brush. All right, you know, if we're going to go paint something, and that's it. That's all we need that cup for. And we're going to come in. It's already open. See it? And then I use my little screen at the bottom. You guys can put whatever you want in the bottom. You don't even need that, really. And for it to dry nice and even, you can either leave it into the water, where it's just touching the water and it absorbs and really breaks down the paint. You can leave it there for a little bit. And then what you want to do is just pull it up and let it drip out. And there you go. It's not going to be bent at all, straight up and down, just like my clothespin trick. Really great. And when you're done, you just put your lid back on and keep your liquid there. And again, if it's water, who cares? You know, you can just, if it's just water, you can replace it. But if it's thinner and you want to keep it for a long time, you can put a lid on and, and then keep your thinner um, so it lasts longer. So there you go. Great idea, Marty. And Spastic Plastic, I'll put a link below to his channel. I don't I think he's like four, five bucks, six bucks. And he also sent me this screwdriver. I don't use too often. Um, he said this works um, with his Nerf guns that he uh, works on. But I do, uh, I could use a Phillips head all the time. I have them over here on my bench. I keep a little toolbox. And uh, yeah, check this out. It's got a spindle on the end, but I'll, it's got different sizes. So for torquing and wherever you are, finger wise you can fit it on I think that is pretty nice and this is also um, on his Etsy channel so I will uh, put that up there thank you Marty for sending those all right next up I started using this my hands would get a little crampish when I do a lot of prepping here oh sorry I should show you this is Fiskars with a built-in blade guard which is uh, right here I think you squeeze them together and you pull up yep there it is that it sits for storage. The blade is protected from your hands right there. Yeah, and it is a Fisker, but there's no particular name on it. Ultra Shop Thread Snips. There you go. And we'll put that aside. And yeah, so you grab this, pull it down. There's your guard. And that's it. And uh, I do a lot of cutting, but paper on the boards here. This cardboard, I replace all my videos um, and things like that. And I took this out too to show you for uh, these are decals, these are water decals. And uh, it works really good here. These are very sharp. You can get really close to the decal. And you're just using your two thumbs. And believe it or not, it's uh, much less fatigue. I've also switched over to uh, a trigger airbrush for a lot of my uh, painting now because of my hand starts to cramp up after these long hours of doing this stuff. But if you're really prepared for everything, you can you really go pain-free. There you go. So yeah, I think these are really comfortable, and uh, they're shaped to the thumb and forefingers right there. They're curved in, and that's it. And uh, it's simple. I figured I'd show you guys. I've been using this a bit behind the scene, and um, I think they're pretty good. They're like $8.99, so price-wise, not bad at all. I think I got these at Walmart or Amazon. I don't know. I'll put a link below. Okay, next I got a bunch of paint from SMS. Let me see. I got behind me here. Hold on, guys. Yeah, I got. I mean, I got a case of paint, a ton. I ordered colors I didn't have in stock. This beautiful orange. I got a lot of colors. But when I saw this SMS, they made these ceramic scrapers. I had these a few years ago, and I haven't replaced them in a while because I can't find them here. And I'm so glad I found them here on the on the site. So let's go ahead and cut this open and show you what these are. These are for scraping flash, and uh, a lot of the kits I work with today don't have flash. The Tamiya kits, Bandai, but um, if you're building an AMT or Revell kit, a lot of flash on there. Some of these, uh, and then uh, of course, if you're 3D printing some of your stuff, trying to get these out of here. If you're 3D print, you're going to get a lot of flashing also, and that's the excess plastic. But these are made of ceramic, so. You're not going to get cut. There. But it's actually a blade. We'll actually use this other handle here. And these are made to fit any 
handle that will hold an X-Acto blade. I don't know if this will, this will work. Let's see. Nope, I don't think this one will do it. Nope, let's get another one. Hold on, guys. Let's get the one I had here. Yeah, see, this this will allow me to expand it much more. All right. I have a ton of handles here from that super handle shootout that I did. So I'm going to pull this way up. There it goes. Yep, this will hold it perfect. Getting close. I'm going to sock this in right here. There we go. Oh, I don't want to hit the camera on you guys. There we go. And that's it. Now this will scrape edges. Actually, I have this plane here for another test, but we can show it here. Particularly on a long fus fuselage like this. And you're going to scrape it. And it's not going to cut in like it would a, uh, a metal blade. Oops. Close pin goes flying. So, yeah. And you can see what's taken off all that dust on my finger right there. And that's nice and even. And uh, it doesn't cut in at all. And these stay sharp a long time, but not sharp to cut you. Like I said, it's not going to cut you. Uh, I think these are really good. I've used these for, uh, on a couple of kits. And then I think they wore not wore out. When I moved to this house, I, I misplaced them. I didn't realize I had missed them all this time until recently because the kits I've been building don't really have much flashing. But if you're building planes or car or uh, cars from AMT, those some of those kits have a lot of flash extra material that's off the molds. So yeah, this is great. And also it would work, I guess, a lot of... Uh, if you're cutting, uh, if you guys are printing 3D stuff, you get a lot of that extra plastic. Take it right off, just like that. So these are really nice ceramic. Uh, they call them scrapers. Yep, just scrapers. Ceramic scrapers. See that? So there. That is that. And this is out for a particular reason, and I'm going to show you that reason right now. Colored cement. Check this out. This is blue and red. Now, I tried dyeing my cement once and it affected it. So, whatever they're using in this doesn't affect it. So, I know you were thinking the shortcut would be just to throw some uh, paint in it, but cheap anyway. I don't know if these were five bucks. <laughs> so, it's, it's cheap anyway. But what this happens is, what this is good for is you see where the, the glue is gone, particularly on these fuselages and a, a F 14 Tomcat I did recently. Um, when I painted it, there was a gap. I couldn't see. I thought the glue, because the glue acts as a like a putty, this type of glue. It goes right along the seam, and then and you could. I didn't realize it didn't reach there. And then also, uh, when I sprayed it, I saw some glue, and it discolored the paint, even through the primer. So if I could see the glue, which you can on the clear ones, like, hold on, guys, like this type of glue, you know, clear. Then I want to sand it. So now, when I put this on, I can see the color. I'm going to show you the color right now. So we're going to shake it up a little bit. Right there. It's got a built-in brush. And we're going to just put this along the side. And I can actually see, like a panel liner, where it's going in. See that? I could see that the glue made its way up there all the way along that seam and um, very important because now I can sand away all this excess, the red. If it's clear it's really hard to see that and it's different colors for different colored kits. So uh, I got the two of them just for the heck of it. I use a lot of glue anyway and we're going to shake this up and we'll see what the blue looks like. We'll do it over here in front of the fuselage. Of the cockpit, rather. There we go. Don't knock that over. I'm going to hold this together tight. All right, I'll put a lot on for the camera. And that's it. It follows along the seam. And that's it. It glues together itself. It should glue together quickly, like the other ones. And then that's it. Now, when I sand it, I can see that I've gotten rid of all the glue, except for in the seam where I want it. And that is the purpose for colored cement. Night blue, this is by Ammo, and red magma. And there we go. Colored cement. All right. Now, I got brand new markers from Hobby Mio. 
and uh, without going through a big test I just colored some right here these are metallics so these are yeah laser pearlescent marker red green yellow blue and silver so what I did was I just put them on here quick to see how they look so you guys can see the colors and there you go they actually dry pretty durable there's no, no uh, drag to it at all no thickness so you know while it's not even I'm guessing this is probably more for eyes and little uh, little bits like that like the eyes and whatnot but um, it's got the smallest type of nib in the front See it? so I do like Hobby Mio products so far they've been really good to me so uh, I wanted to try their new markers and that is them there's the blue green the yellow the silver I couldn't see on here so I guess the silver would have to go on a darker piece this is not them this is what I'm going to show you next so let's get these out of the way next I found these even though I'm not in the market for any more markers God knows but I found these at Walmart for five bucks all right in a nice case look at this all right now they're very fine this is what I liked about them they're very fine and um, because of that I figured I could panel line with them all right I mean this is only going to work on certain things but look at how fine they are now I took the green already and put it in here check this out see that so we'll put the blue in here and I'll just keep going around there we go I gotta let it dry before I can rub it off and I think they're alcohol based so we can just use uh, the same thinner I would use with my uh, my panel liners that I just released check that out and this is the yellow I put in here see it let's try another color I mean five bucks I tried to look them up anywhere on uh, Amazon but evidently they're made exclusively by uh, these this particular set is in Walmart but a five not four four ninety nine I think I paid absolute bargain let's see if we can uh, fill this in for you guys just like that one yep it's like a little vent area here but this is good if you're gonna build kits like if you're on a trip or you're on a kitchen table go ahead and uh, use markers I'm going off the edge on purpose here because I want to see if it rubs off and it does. Check that out. Yeah, but these are really, really fine. So, uh, yeah, not bad. Uh, kind of impressed, really impressed at the price and the nice kit that it came in. But yeah, I just got those recently because uh, it was on a it was a fluke. So I'm going to try these and see if they work. And you know what? They work. Look at that. Not as good as you know dipping the paint like my new ones I just released. But, uh, hey, gets the job done. Not too bad. Here are the edges I did of uh, the blue and the green Hobby Mio. I just trying to hit different edges to see what I could highlight. And that's, that's why I did that. And that's the blue and that's the red uh, glue I just did. All right. We're getting close to uh, wrapping up before we go ahead and do the uh, hack for the uh, spray booth. All right, second to last is liquid mask. Check this out. Now, this is liquid masking tape, and uh, this is by Humbrol. There's this purple. It's got a safety cap. Sorry, guys. There it is. You can see it. Looks like purple slime. Nice beefy jar, though. This one is by uh, uh, Mr. Hobby. I like this one in particular. This one really works for me well. It's a dark green same viscosity and this one is from uh, the craft store I don't know if it was Michaels Hobby Lobby one of them I've had this for a little bit but I like the applicator for this one all right this is fine line is that it is that the brand I guess it is all right and this has a nice needle application check this out do that so what you do is uh, you get this spoon here all right, here we go. Let's just pour some out. See, I'm just throwing it all over this spoon just to show you guys. All right. 
See it? And when we're going to spray over this, paint is not going to, of course, go below that, but this rubs right off. In theory, we're going to find out. And uh, God knows I'm going to try and put this needle back in here. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I can't believe it. And so we'll let this dry, and that's what it looks like dry. And it's like rubber. And we're going to paint over this, and then uh, that will leave behind just a clear spot, as if uh, we masked it. So I did some on here. Here's the purple one. See it? I took this gumpler piece. Sorry, guys. Hit the camera. See it? I just quickly went over that corner and then in the proper shape. Once you get it in there, you can get a sharp knife and carve what you want. Right? This is a tip I painted with the uh, Mr. Hobby brand. Look at that. And then I did a few more. I did edges here. I just painted up a few things. This one's already done. I painted just some primer over it and I just put... Uh, the sticky stuff on the end here just to see how it looks when we peel it off so we're going to go ahead and uh, airbrush these and we'll peel it off and look at the results and then onto the spray booth all right guys i just uh grabbed the color here this is flat blue from tamia sprayed the spoon and all the pieces just quick uh, i use tamia dries really fast with alcohol in it and um that's what I figured we'd do. Now let's see how this stuff works. I started peeling this one behind the scenes here to make it easier. There we go. That peeled right off. And there it is. Here is the goop right here. See it? So let's do another one. Um, let's try. The spoon would make it the easiest, right? Let's see. Where do we go here? Right here? here we, oh, look at this. This one comes right off. Yeah, and I could probably use an eraser, but let's go. This is just to show you guys quickly how this stuff works. Let's see. All right. Yep, see it? It's great for camouflage patterns, I guess, huh? Look at that. Hold on, we're still going here. <laughs> so uh, that is liquid masking tape. Um, the reason I had it earlier was because I used it for, uh, well, let's try this one. This is the, uh, Hobby Mia, uh, Mr. Hobby brand. I, um, I did inserts in my car seats, little car seats, you know, they have like, you know, have different colored inserts on the cars and I would paint on the in, paint the seat, the main insert color, and then paint this stuff over it because it was really tough to mask inside those car seats, you know, and then, uh, this is the Mr. Hobby one. This is the one I like the most. There we go. Sorry, guys, I gotta use my eyes in a certain way here. All right, here we go. All right, that right off. Look at that. See it? So there is the piece, just like liquid masking tape, right there. Look at that. This one came off perfect. I really like uh, the Mr. Hobby one the best. It just it seems to go on the best. It, it peels off the easiest. Look at that. So I'll take this off of here. It's still stuck to my hand. All right, there, there's the piece. See that? Look at that. So, there you go. Liquid mask. Uh, a good thing to have on the bench, particularly if you're going to do quite a bit of masking. Uh, I recommend this one. I'm not sure where I got it. I'll put a link uh, where I find where I can find it. They show it here on canopies. See, canopies for aircraft. You can just brush the whole thing on and then just cut out where you want it to be. Um, covered up. And just peel off the excess because it doesn't harm the glass so really really good stuff to have all right now we're going to turn our attention to finishing um, this filter for the booth and then we'll wrap this up we're going to go this way once again all right here we are facing the booth i just peeled off the plastic cellophane off of this you know like i said it comes with hold on it comes with this charcoal uh, filter pad which is really good but I also have the roll which I'm going to show you now um, I oh I want to show you this too it comes with these because to keep this uh, together between the two pieces um, I was going to use uh, twisty ties you know just twisty ties a couple you know you may one around each corner but it comes with these see I'm holding in my hand they're little clips so you can put the two together 
So we'll use these, they're reusable too. They're like spring-loaded little plastic clips. So we'll go ahead and use that. Let me grab my Bandai nipper. I cut one already. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna match it up. So yeah, see what size we need. All right, I can come into play here into the camera. And that's it. So we're gonna match it up right here. Take the snips. All right, and we're just gonna cut all the way across. Just find the one that you need, which is right there. And then we're gonna come up here and see which one we need up here. Basically gonna take the end off. And then, it's the one that's already done. Just gonna come down all the way and just snip her all the way down. This is fun. Said nobody. And you can come across where I put the first cut. Just follow that across. All right. I will finish this on camera. I'll pause it for one second, off camera I mean, and we'll be right back. All right, my friends, we did it. My camera mount when I use a, when I'm airbrushing on camera. So that's why that is sitting there like that. Let's take this filter pad, lay it in between. All right, we're gonna lay this on top. Get my whole body swinging in here and then we'll see if we get these clips to work. I don't know if there's enough space, but let's find out. So you can just push these through. I don't know if it's gonna work. I might not even need them. You know what, guys? I might, I think, I think, oh, you know what? It kind of holds it there while I'm working on it. Off by a little bit, but let's go ahead and even that up. That works. It did work. All right. To make sure it's even. But I think the strength of the filter pad pushing out will actually hold everything in place. Again, you got to use this idea in different ways for you, if it's uh, if you have a different type of spray booth than what I have here. All right, I'm gonna try and do this without them, at least at the top. Here goes one. Here goes the other. You held it up here. It's holding up there pretty good. Yep. And look at this. It works. back up here I think they're twisty and yeah, my twisty ties will work better these are a little weak yeah these are too weak but there it is I want to come down here and up and there it is now we're good to go all I have to do is buy rolls of this aquarium filter pad and change that and uh, the two grates you buy once I think they're 10 11 bucks a piece got mine at uh, Lowe's and uh, you're good to go I mean uh, an awesome hack terrific those other filter pads are five six seven bucks a piece and um, I was using the roll in my other um, the basic spray boots that I have the water filter the waterfall ones in the other room and the one from Amazon and um, I said, boy, if I can only use that type of filter padding here, it would be awesome. And it does. It works. I, I was just walking through the store and saw that grid, and that gave me the idea that it would hold up this filter pad. And there it is. So there you go. That is the hack. And uh, let's head back to the booth. We'll wrap this up. Another sneak peek at my airbrush. I'll give you guys a little more info on it uh, right now. Hey, guys. I was going back to uh, the bench. I said, eh, let's stay at the booth. So here it is. It is my uh, cooperation with Gallery. I've shown this a few times now, but uh, we got a little more info. Uh, work, they're working right now on airbrush stands. Yes, we're going to have airbrush stands uh, exclusively under my name. And uh, I think the only difference is we're going to make, make me make this blue so it matches um, the airbrush. That's why I requested it anyway. We'll see what happens. Number two, you guys requested a fan cap. Fan cap they're working on right now. So this will be out right now. We're looking at the 20th, the 20th of November, a couple weeks, and this baby will be on the market. Uh, I'm testing it behind the scenes now. It's incredible. You guys are going to love it. The price point is right there at 120 
119 beautiful super beefy nozzle look at that um, the handle we'll go over more details but you see the handle is solid aluminum versus hold on I'll show you from their advanced series which I use all the time use it today actually right look at that it's hollow see it like pressed steel on here we're looking at solid aluminum it completely is feels awesome in the hand um, but like I said, I'm going to go through, we're going to paint everything with, we're going to go through everything, we're going to change needles, nozzles, we're going to do all that. But I want to let you guys know that it lo we're looking at the 20th of November, we're looking at a huge discount, 20% off, getting it close to $100, and free shipping. Um, the goal here is to work without Amazon, who has been sending out a lot of crap lately, and you guys get these bad airbrushes, and it gives the company a bad name. So um, what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and ship directly from the manufacturer. We're going to throw in free shipping. So uh, it's still going to be as if you ordered it on Prime. So And with a 20% discount, it's going to go like gangbusters. I can't wait for you guys uh, to try this. As I said, well, a few more videos to go with some tests, but then we're going to land right on this, and uh, we're going to do a full-on test. I want to do it closer to when you can purchase it. I don't want to put it up as a tease. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll show it when you can go ahead and order it. That's what we're going to do. But I might have a few more teasers coming up on it. And um, very excited. Very excited for you guys to try this. And also excited that we're going to finally have airbrush stands available for you guys. And uh, a fan cap will also be available uh, for my Swallowtail airbrush. Anyway, guys, that is all for now. Thank you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We try to go over two videos a week. i got another one coming this weekend. This weekend we're working on... Uh, bear spray paint we're gonna decant them and we're gonna spray them out of the can some beautiful colors here a gold um, look at this rose gold so we're gonna try these that'll probably be the next video as I've already started testing them and uh, kind of impressed now I haven't decanted them yet we're gonna decant them and then we're gonna airbrush them and see uh, if we get even get good results there but so far very good spray paints for the money $6.99 for the opaques and I think nine for the um, metallics so anyway that's probably coming up next we'll see you over the weekend but please like the video subscribe if you haven't already and uh, once we hit that hundred thousand subscribers an incredible massive giveaway my airbrush a compressor a spray booth I'm giving it all away you will need nothing even a kit I will throw in even the paint I'm gonna throw in even a pair of nippers we're gonna throw in you won't need nothing you're gonna have it all with this giveaway as we approach 100,000. The push is on. So tell your friends, family, neighbors, hey man, subscribe to Barbatos Rex. Uh, you will all will have a chance at one in 100,000. Whoever leaves a comment is the ones who will have the chance. But that's when we reach the, uh, the plateau. Anyway, man, coming soon is my airbrush. Really excited for it. Thank you guys for sticking around so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a great day.